So, you've watched a lot of laptop reviews online from a guy who looks like an older, uglier version of Harry Potter. And because of that, you've decided that for your next thin and light laptop for basic homeschool or office use, you're going to go with one with an Intel Lunar Lake processor. Well, good choice. But hold on. Is one with a Core Ultra 7 Lunar Lake processor worth the price difference over one with an Ultra 5? Well, we have the results from two ThinkPad X9s and two Surface Laptop 7s. Each of these sets of laptops has a unit with an Ultra 5 processor and one with an Ultra 7. Now, since we value your time, here's the answer. There is very little difference in CPU performance between an Ultra 5 and an Ultra 7, but the Ultra 7 has a slightly more powerful integrated GPU. So whether that's worth a couple of hundred dollars extra, that's really up to you. But we think for most people, especially for these type of users, it's just not. Before I continue, a little personal note. We have been working very hard to grow this channel. High quality videos, more videos, cool collabs. Hopefully you've noticed. We think that we can do even more. If you appreciate our focus on valuing your time and wallet, then I have a little ask for you. Please get subscribed if you haven't already. It definitely helps supercharge our growth and that means that we can make more videos for you. Now back to the video. Actually, it's still me. In the old days, which were like four to five years ago, the main difference between the processors was the number at the end, i3, i5, or i7. Today what matters more is the processor range. Lunar Lake is Intel's premium processors for thin and light laptops. Arrow Lake is for larger laptops that are still portable, but they are more powerful than Lunar Lake. Arrow Lake HX is for big powerful laptops. Designations like Ultra 5 and Ultra 7, they're now more of a sub-designation and just don't matter as much. For example, the Ultra 5 226V and the Ultra 7 258V that are in our ThinkPad X9s, they both have eight cores, made up of four performance cores and four low powered efficient cores. They both have a TDP of 17 watts, configurable down to 8 watts and up to 37. Where they differ is their cache, clock frequency and integrated graphics. The Ultra 5 has a smaller Intel Smart Cache, lower base clock speed by 100 MHz and lower max speed by 300. It also has a worse integrated GPU. These same basic differences carry over to the Surface Laptop 7 processors as well, the Ultra 5 236V and the Ultra 7 266V. With that said, here's Sierra to show you how these differences actually play out. We'll start by looking at how the Ultra 5s perform versus the Ultra 7s in CPU tasks. As Josh said, we're going to show you results from the two ThinkPad X9s we had in and the Ultra 7 Surface we had in. Just an FYI, we didn't get in the Ultra 5 version of the Surface. Instead, we've partnered with YouTuber Andrew Mark David, who tested that model. Because we are using someone else's numbers for some comparisons, the Ultra 5 Surface will not be on our temperature or battery life graphs, as he doesn't measure these in the same way. We just wanted to compare more than one laptop for you with these two processors. For the ThinkPads, their screen, chassis, cooling, and such is all the same, but their RAM is different. Our Ultra 5 model has 16 gigs and our Ultra 7 has 32, but none of our benchmarks require more than 8 gigs of RAM, so we feel this difference is irrelevant. First, we look at Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks you might actually do on your laptop, like unzipping a file. The Ultra 5s only seem to lag behind their Ultra 7 counterparts by about 6 to 8% in both single and multi-core. In comparison to other modern chips, they do the worst here, which is what we're used to seeing from Lunar Lake. We're also showing you the Slim 9i, which is a better performing Lunar Lake for comparison. That feeds its processor more power than the X9 or Surface do. We'd assume if there was an Ultra 5 variant of that laptop, it would also perform better than the Ultra 5 in these ones. Unfortunately, because that laptop is so premium, it doesn't come with an Ultra 5 variant. The rest of the laptops on these graphs represent a similar price range and are aimed at a similar type of buyer. Now, we are going to switch to Cinebench, which tests the processor when it's maxed out. Something that most buyers of laptops with these processors are unlikely to do, but it does help us understand what these chips are capable of in such a laptop. The Ultra 5 ThinkPad performs about the same as the Ultra 7 version in multi-core while the surfaces have a bigger gap in performance. Both Ultra 7s have a better showing than their counterparts in single core. Again, we are seeing all four of these devices fall behind most modern CPUs and comparable laptops. One of the benefits of a worse performing processor is generally a quieter, cooler laptop, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. The surface we had with Ultra 7 got very warm to the touch, and over a long running performance test, the X9s are both being fed a similar amount of power and perform around the same as we showed you. But even though both of those laptops have the same keyboard temperatures, the Ultra 5 variant gets much warmer on the underside. We thought this was pretty weird, considering the Ultra 5 is meant to run slower. We ended up retesting this three times. When you look at their clock speeds during this test, they actually average around the same. 
We thought perhaps the fans weren't spinning up as much on our Ultra 5 variant. But when you look at our fan noise graph, they seem to be running at about the same speed. So we don't know if the Ultra 5 happens to be a binned version of the Ultra 7 and is a less efficient chip, or whether it's to do with something else, like a poorer application of thermal paste in our specific X9. We only have one unit of each here, so this result is far from statistically significant. Now onto integrated graphics performance, which is one of the places these chips are meant to vary greatly. In TimeSpy, which is a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark, the ARC 130V graphics in the ThinkPad X9's Ultra 5 chip do about 20% worse than the 140V graphics in the Ultra 7. This also places the Ultra 5 chip firmly between the current Radeon 880M and 890M graphics from AMD in terms of performance. The Ultra 5 in the Surface only does about 8% worse than its counterpart, but it still lands in that same range. Something we want to call out here is that both X9s perform worse in CPU than both surfaces here. We're surprised to see that, considering the power draw should be about the same. In Wildlife Extreme, a cross-platform benchmark that is also compatible with macOS, the 130V graphics in the ThinkPad do the worst among competitors. We did retest this and got a similar result each time. We're starting to think there may be something wrong with our chip, so we'll disregard the gap here. In Andrew Mark David's results, on the other hand, the Ultra 5 surface only lags behind by about 14%, which is probably more representative. This even tracks with the one less graphics score and slower clock speed in the 130V. Moving from 8 to 7 cores is about a 13% difference. These benchmark scores pretty much mean that you can play less demanding games and do lighter creative tasks on both the Ultra 5 and Ultra 7 processors with minimal differences. But the Ultra 7 is going to be able to handle slightly higher settings and or give you slightly more frames. When it comes to heat and fan noise during iGPU tasks in the ThinkPad, the Ultra 5 processor stays quieter and cooler to the touch than the Ultra 7. This time, its heat and fan noise makes sense, as it performs much worse. If you are looking to do creative tasks like Photoshop, similar to our gaming tests, the Ultra 7 does better. We wouldn't really recommend a Lunar Lake laptop for tasks like this, and I think this graph shows you why pretty clearly. Laptops like the MacBooks or the Omnibook Ultra with Zen 5, which cost a similar price, are much better at tasks like photo editing. Now let's check out battery life, which should theoretically be better on the Ultra 5 because it is running at a lower max frequency than the Ultra 7. These chips continue to perform about the same, though, while maintaining their performance when unplugged. They also drain about the same amount of battery when doing the CPU-intensive task. Oddly enough, the Ultra 5 even does a little worse. This is odd because worse performance usually leads to less battery drain. You can see this reinforced when you look at the Slim 9i. It has a larger battery, but drains more of it during this test because of its better performance. When it comes to lighter tasks, like playing a movie over Wi-Fi, the Ultra 5 only does about 2% better. This is also the case in our full battery rundown while playing a movie on repeat from the laptop itself. This means that differences in battery are so small that they are probably not noticeable. We found this to be disappointing, as we expected the Ultra 5 to do a lot better here. What is noticeable between these two laptops, though, is their price. In our X9 review, we recommended the nicer screen and the Ultra 5 variant. The unfortunate thing is that you have to custom build the laptop to be able to get this configuration. This means it may take longer to ship to you. Regardless, if we go through that process and configure it with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, the price for this laptop is $1459 with the Ultra 5. It goes up to $1759 with the Ultra 7. Weirdly enough, Lenovo's website only lists it as a $200 difference, but it clearly jumps up by more. I double-checked it. It appears they are charging you the extra $100 because you get 32 gigs of memory, which many buyers of this laptop won't need. But you don't always get a choice of memory with Lunar Lake as it's included on the chip. So this makes the Ultra 5 variant $300 cheaper. This is a huge savings on what is a pretty nice laptop, all things considered. You get a haptic trackpad, great webcam and speakers, nice display. Can't really go wrong with this one. This is also the case for the Surface Laptop 7 for Business, which also offers both processors. There is a flat $200 difference between the $1,500 starting price and the $1,700 it jumps up to. Which brings me to our conclusion. Given how the X9 and Surface are both expensive laptops, unless you need the faster integrated graphics, it sort of feels like a no-brainer to get the cheaper Ultra 5 variant. Our only concern is the slightly higher heat you feel during performance tasks, but we are hopeful that our unit of the X9 is a bit of an anomaly.
We don't really recommend running performance tasks on these laptops anyways. For light use, which is the intention of these devices, we don't think most people will notice any difference. This is why we're going to be recommending the less expensive Ultra 5 variants on our website and in our future laptop videos. We think it's honestly a little greedy on the manufacturer's part that many of these laptops, you don't even get the choice for the cheaper processor when they're so incredibly similar. It's also a little annoying on Intel's part to be designating them differently when they are clearly in the same class of processor. As Josh mentioned, these findings are specific to these lower powered Intel Lunar Lake processors. If you want us to do the same comparison for AMD or Intel's higher powered ones, leave a comment below to let us know. If you're shopping for a laptop, check out our website, justjosh.tech. That's where we put all the laptops we recommend for different types of buyers, as well as where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and we will catch you later.